the bane of all coaching, all coaches. Um, and this is some languaging, if you can really help me around this one. People sure. engage me. This is really ironic. People engage me and they say, Sam, I want you to hold me accountable. I go, yeah, no worries, right? No, that's what a coach does. And then, you know, we, we talk about strategies. And then the next session, you, you can bet something's going to come up. And I'll say, how'd you go with that? And they go, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't do that. Right? Or, you know, they give me some nice lame excuse or whatever. But, um, you know, it, 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 I guess it happens occasionally. What do you suggest is a nice way, a nice way to, to and I've tried different methods, but um, to language that, so that people, uh, you know, have have they, they want to take action, and you can flush out the reasons why they're not doing it. When they say engaged. to you, "I didn't do it," you're gonna say, "Why?" Okay, <laughs> sounds pretty good. They'll go, "Oh yeah, well, oh, look, I've been um, yeah, I've been busy, or this, that, and the other thing." So how do we prioritize this for you and separate out what your time commitments are so you have enough time to move this thing forward? Here's what I'm worried about, John. If we don't begin to sort out and prioritize what you're doing in, in the time that you're allocating for certain things, you'll end up falling backwards and being buried by your own business. So are you, are you committed to making this happen? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am, Ari. I am, Ari. You know, that's uh, been trying. Yeah. Well, let, let's make it happen. Let's make this happen now. Let's now decide what your top three priorities will be in the next seven days that you will have done before we meet next time. Is that okay with you? Yeah. You got to do this, Sam, approach. with nurturing in your voice. It can't be uh, with a whip. You, you you can't be angry or frustrated. You can't have any sense of frustration with them. It has to be the doctor-patient relationship where it's nurturing, warm, and caring because they need that to be able to make the change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you're... Yeah. I think that's part of the problem, Mari, is I'm too warm and caring. You know, like I'm on this call, I'm a bit more natural, but in that situation, you know, I'm, I'm caring, I'm empathetic, and maybe I'm a bit too light, and that's why the next time we meet, they still haven't done something. Well, there's delivery and lightness in how you communicate, but the real core of this is making sure they're responsible and they own the problem. As you're putting the burden on them to help them realize yeah. if you need to decide right now, is this a priority for you to, to get off your plate and fix once and for all or not? Because if it's not, there's no point in us working together. So you got to be willing to walk away, yeah, Sam, yeah. if they aren't willing to own their own problem. Otherwise, you're stretching yeah, something out that will end up breaking anyways. Mm. Yeah, I love it, Ari. That's really good languaging. I like, you know, I'm glad this is recorded because this is exactly what I needed. And I think that approach, because, you know, I care. I care. For, I don't want them to spend money if it's not working for them. But at the same time, I want exactly. them to, you know, hey, listen, this is your life. You know, this is your business. You need to do something. So I like that approach. That's perfect. Thank you, Ari.